Hey, I just wanted to tell you my amazing idea. Now that he's gone, I think it would be best if I inherited the mansion. I'm sorry, but what? Who is this? Oh, sorry. I guess you didn't know that I got your number. Anyway, nice to meet you, Alla. I'm Susie, Tobias's wife. Well, common law wife. We didn't get married before he had the accident. But you should know that since you're just his wife in name only, he loved me more than he loved you. Oh, it's you. Well, you're actually the third person to come forward. Third person? What do you mean by that? You're the third person to contact me and say the same thing since Toby's accident. Oh, really? Well, you can ignore everyone else and let me have it. I'm also going to take over as the sole proprietor of his estate. But I guess it doesn't matter what you decide, because I came here solely for the purpose of moving into this house, so it's mine now. <laughs> this house? Don't tell me that you're there right now. I'm chilling in the living room now as we speak. Getting in here took quite a lot of energy, so I'm taking a well-deserved little break. How on earth did you get in? I locked all the doors before I left the house today. Oh, that's easy. Tobias gave me a copy of the key. What? How could he do that? No need to fuss over the details. All you need to know is that I moved in here today. It's mine now, so don't bother coming back. What? You can't do that. That's my house. You can't have it, and you can't stay there. Oh, come on. We both know that you're not fooling anyone with that lie. Doesn't matter if you believe me or not. I'm going to call the police. Go ahead. But they won't be able to do anything because I have a copy of Tobias's will. You do? Yes. And in it, it says, after his death, I get the mansion. I get everything that belongs to him. There is no way that it says that. Well, it does, so you need to get out of my house right away. Oh, wait. You're already out. <laughs> Thanks for not being here when I moved in. Saved me a lot of trouble of having to kick you out physically. The will that you have isn't valid. What? Of course it is. It isn't. I'm the one that bought the house. It's my property, and it was never Toby's to give away in the first place. Oh? Is that how you tricked all the other women who came to you? No, it isn't an excuse or a trick. It's the truth. Tobias didn't even spend one penny when I bought the house. That might have worked on the other dumb woman, but not me. I won't give up that easily. Besides, I know that Tobias had a lot of money saved up. He told me that he paid for the house in cash. That was the line he used to trick women into liking him. I know you're just trying to throw me off, but I won't be moved that easily. You've met your match in me, you ugly witch. God, you're so rude. Just calling it like it is. If you want to blame someone, blame your parents for having such a hideous daughter that couldn't satisfy her husband. You don't deserve to live in that house anyway. The fact that you even lived there brings the value of it down. You better watch what you say to me. Or what? What are you going to do? <laughs> even though we're both the same age, you've really let yourself go. I don't blame Tobias at all for cheating on you. I bet everyone who's ever seen you would say the same thing. Tobias was right to cheat on you. You've never even met me, so you can't even see anything. That's what you think, but I saw you come out of the house. So you're admitting to stalking me? You're ugly, and you're stupid. I wasn't stalking you. I was just waiting for my time to strike. I have better things to do than waste my time worrying about your insignificant life. You sound completely unhinged. You can call me that if that's what makes you feel better, but it doesn't change the fact that the house looks better with me in it than you. <laughs> well, enjoy your time in it while it lasts. The police are on their way and they will be there soon. They're going to arrest you for trespassing and breaking and entering. You really called them? I did. Just like I said I would. So if you don't want to be arrested, then you should get out of there before they arrive. Fine. I'll leave this time, but don't think you've won. I'll be back soon. This mansion's going to be mine, and I won't rest until it is. 
My husband, Toby, died suddenly from a terrible car accident. His passing is already a big ordeal for me, but now I also have to deal with all the messages from people who want our house. Everything has been completely exhausting. So far, the women who have come forward with these claims believed me when I said that the house was mine and have since left me alone. But this Susie person has been particularly stubborn. She even managed to let herself into my house. When the police arrived, Susie wasn't there. I know I shouldn't waste time dealing with someone like her, but a part of me wants to know what my husband did while he was still alive. When we thought about growing our family, Toby and I decided to build a bigger house for ourselves, but I was the one that paid for everything. Now that he's gone, the place is just too big for just me to live in. When Susie said that she had the key, it made me feel super uneasy, that I can't even sleep at night. I moved into a hotel for a while to calm myself down, but then something shocking and unexpected was waiting for me. I have a copy of Tobias's bank statement. What? How did you get that? It was easy. As his wife, I deserve to have a copy. Wait, did you take it when you were at the house yesterday? Of course I did. How else was I able to get it? Tobias can't give it to me now. Man, you ask the stupidest questions. That's basically stealing personal information. You should know that what you did is a crime. Oh, I'm so scared. <laughs> Why don't you call the police like you did yesterday? I think I will, actually. You don't even know where I am or even my full name, so what are you going to tell them? <laughs> you can't even give them a description of what I look like. They might just end up charging you for wasting their precious time. That would be so funny. I would pay money to see that. <laughs> I am going to hire a detective to find out who you are. It's going to be easy for them to find out who you are. You like to talk a lot of crap. Don't do something stupid like that. Stop wasting people's time. It's just going to be embarrassing for you in the end. What do you mean by that? I told you. I have a copy of Tobias's will. That means that the mansion and the money are going to be mine in the end. No matter what. Whatever you do to try and change that will be futile and pointless. I already told you that the house will never be yours. And I told you that I'm getting that house no matter what. You really want to live in that house? Yes, of course. It's beautiful. I'm tired of fighting you over the same thing over and over again. Sounds like I'm about to win. The gods of victory are smiling down on me today. <laughs> We can keep this going as long as you want, but it won't change the outcome. That's true. Fine. You can stay there if you want. I'm glad that you finally came to your senses. You lost, and I won. I won't be able to do it myself, so I'm going to let a professional take a look at all the documents. Is that all right with you? Yeah, that would be better. Thank you. You're welcome. By the way... This isn't the only bank account he has, right? This statement isn't everything, right? <laughs> Could you give me the rest of his money, too? If you want, I can give up all my rights to inherit Tobias's assets. You can be the head of his estate. Are you being serious? Yes, I am. I'll give you all of Tobias's assets and everything that he has. That would be so amazing. Thank you. But I have to ask... What's with the sudden change of heart? I've lost all energy to fight you for it. Oh, how sad that is for you, but how lucky that is for me. I'm going to hire a third party to deal with the transfer, but I'm going to need some information from you, so please tell me your address. Yeah, okay, no problem. 365 Applewood Lane. Near the bowling alley? That's right. Thanks. I'll contact you again when I have everything ready. No, thank you. The faster, the better. But it might take a little time to get everything ready. Yeah, that's fine. I should probably go on a vacation while you get everything ready. Sure. Thanks for taking over Tobias's estate. It was giving me a lot of stress. You must have hit your head somewhere to say something like that. No, I'm just tired. I don't want to deal with you anymore. Well... 
That's what happens when you try to fight me. Either way, I'll gladly take it. You should have just handed it over the first time I asked. <laughs> Serves you right. Thanks for contacting me. I was able to get out of the lease for my apartment earlier than I thought, so I'm going to start moving my things into the house now. Did you sign all the paperwork already? Of course I did. I signed all the papers as soon as I got them. I bet the ink hasn't even dried yet. <laughs> did you listen to what my lawyer told you? It was too long and boring, so I just sat there and nodded. But in reality, I had my earbuds in and I was listening to music. <laughs> Uh, then when his mouth stopped moving, I signed the papers. Is that so? I was so glad that he didn't stick around after I signed the papers. I see. Well, I'm already finished moving out, so you can move in whenever you want. Oh, are you scared of me now? I am scared because I don't know what you're going to do next. You're very unpredictable. You stood between me and what I wanted. That's all. Don't take it too personally, but I do hope that it was a lesson learned on your part. Don't ever try to get in my way again. I'm not going to let you ruin my mood. I'm so happy that the mansion is finally mine. This is the best day ever. Well, actually, the house isn't and won't ever be yours. What do you mean? I told you, it was never Toby's house to give away. It was mine. But since you had your heart so set on it, I decided I would rent it to you. What? The papers that you signed weren't the deed to the house. It was a rental agreement. You're lying. I'm not lying. That's what the papers were. I'm pretty sure my lawyer gave you a copy. You can read it yourself. No way! This can't be happening! If you had read over the papers, or even listened to what my lawyer was saying, you would have realized what was going on before you signed. Reading before signing a contract is the first rule of business. Why didn't you tell me? The lawyer did tell you. I just told you that. So it really is your house? That wasn't just a lie to get me off your case? That's right. I've been nothing but truthful this whole time. Then... The will I have isn't worth anything? Right you are again. You're on a roll. Good for you. Stop mocking me. This isn't funny. I'm serious here. The rent is going to cost you, but you'll probably be able to start living there from today, just like you wanted. What the hell is this? Brokerage fees? I thought that was the amount that I was going to inherit. Oh, no, that's not what you are going to get. If you read it, you would have known that. On top of that, I have to pay $10,000? A month? To live there? That's too expensive. You should have listened to what my lawyer was saying. I guess you learned another valuable lesson today. I'm canceling the contract right now. When you want to break the rental agreement, you need to give at least three months' notice... That's also written in the rental agreement contract. Whether you live there or not, you're still obligated to pay three months of rent. Three times 10000 is $30,000. By the way, rent doesn't include utilities. You're responsible for that yourself. That's on page three, paragraph seven under the renter's responsibilities. Fine. I'm at the bank now. I'll pay it all off using the money that's in Tobias's bank account. How will you do that? Tobias's bank statement says he has $500,000. Oh, that. You won't be able to use his money to cover it. Why not? Don't tell me you froze his bank account out of spite. You'll be glad to hear that I didn't do that. Then why can't I use the money? You're at the bank already. Why don't you see what happens when you try to access the money? I will. Wait. Two dollars and seventy-four cents? That's all he has in there? That sounds about right. As soon as we got married, we set up that bank account and made it our rainy day fund. But Toby just spent all the money I put in there on frivolous things. He used all of it behind my back. He probably spent it on women like you. Why didn't you tell me that? You should have told me that sooner. Even if I did tell you, would you have believed me without finding it out yourself? Yeah, that might be true. But still, 
I should have checked the bank account as soon as I was able to instead of just waiting. Same here. I thought you would have found out by now. I was waiting until it was time to move to use that money. But it's okay. There are still others. Oh, Toby's assets, you mean? That's right. You said that I could have them. Yeah, his estate and everything is all yours. While I have your attention, there's something I want to talk to you about. You said that Tobias and you were in a common law relationship and you refer to yourself as his wife? That's right. I was more his wife than you have ever been. You do know that common law doesn't apply to people who are still married, right? What? It doesn't? Yeah, you're not entitled to anything unless Tobias specifically named you in the will. He did do that. In the copy that I have, he left me all his assets. You would be entitled to that if the will that you had was real, but it isn't. You say that, but how do you know? Well, the first thing is that it's just a typed up document. Secondly, it's not even notarized or dated. It doesn't even have the signature of two witnesses. Tobias probably just typed that up one night just to please you. He probably knew full well that it wasn't legally binding. But he assured me that it was the real deal. I don't doubt that he did. He told you what you wanted to hear. And you believed him because that piece of paper was all you wanted. And you didn't care about the details. So he tricked me? He sure did. Also, I would stop saying out loud that you were his common law wife if I were you. Why not? Because we don't live in Utah. Polygamy is illegal. I didn't know that. The only reason I claim to be his wife is because I wanted in on his inheritance. He owes me that much for being with him. Well, you don't have to claim to be his wife to get his estate. You could have just asked. I was very happy to sign it over to you. That's the other document my lawyer gave you. Oh, finally, things are looking up. I'll say. I'm so glad you took it off my hands. I don't need his burdens and his debts. What? Burdens and debt? Toby was never good with money. He was in a lot of debt. He was hooked on shopping and gambling. It's going to be very hard for you to repay everything. Wait a second. I'm responsible for his debts? I didn't know that he had money problems. You sure are. <laughs> You're in charge of his estate now. That's not what I signed up for. It might not be what you wanted, but you certainly signed up for it. My lawyer explained that to you earlier before you signed. You tricked me. You and Tobias conspired against me. I didn't trick you. How was I supposed to know that you would just sign all the documents without even listening to the lawyer? I thought you would see how ridiculous your position was and leave me alone after the lawyer explained everything. I never even dreamed I would be so lucky that you would actually take it. <laughs> Again, I am very thankful for that, even though it has been quite an ordeal. Stop making fun of me. This isn't fair. If you know how much he owes, you better tell me now. It should be on the document, but the last time I checked, it was about 580000 But the number grows every day with the interest. Oh my god. I don't have that much money. That's more money than I'll ever see in my life. You're going to have to find a way because, unfortunately, the debt wasn't accrued through normal institutions. I don't think they much care about the legalities and getting the money back. But I just can't. I just left my apartment. Now I need to pay for rent of that stupid big house and it isn't even furnished. I threw away all my old furniture because I thought I would be able to buy new ones with the money. Wow, I guess that's why they say don't count your chickens until they've hatched. <laughs> I have my own debts too, you know. Of course you do. I thought I would be able to pay them off with Tobias's money. I even added to the debt by going on that trip. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. That really sucks for you. You should have thought everything through more carefully. What should I do? Don't look at me. It's your mess. Do I have to remind you that you broke into my house and stole those bank statements from me? I didn't break in. I had a key. Even if you did have the key, you entered without my permission. It still counts as trespassing. But I gain nothing from it. He only had $2.74 in his bank account. 
That doesn't matter. Just because you didn't benefit doesn't decriminalize what you did. You should not have taken it off the property. That is called theft. Even an elementary school student could understand that. Okay, then I'll apologize. From the bottom of my heart, I'm so sorry for what I did. I'm sorry I entered your house without your permission, and I deeply regret taking that paper. Can you please find it in your heart to forgive me? Sure, I forgive you. But the apology is a little late. I already submitted a complaint to the police. It's not too late. You can withdraw it. Please do that for me. Sorry, but I can't. I think they're already on their way since I gave them your address as well. How can you be so cruel? I can't be in debt and go to jail. You're killing me twice already. All I can do is pray that you'll be able to come out of this a changed person. Wait, you own the house, right? Yeah, I said that already. What about it? You said that you put money into Tobias's account. You're just repeating what I said. I don't see your point. That means you must be loaded. Well, I guess I would say that I do pretty well for myself. Sure. You really are amazing for a really plain looking person. But that is my point. You're able to lend me money without interest. What? You want me to lend you money even though you've been horrible to me? You even just insulted my looks. Sorry, I, I didn't mean it. it. It just sort of slipped out. It won't happen again, I swear. Slipped out? In text? No, I think that was intentional. Anyway, no, I won't be lending you any money. You're not exactly trustworthy. I don't think it would be a good investment. Can't you just give me a break? You have enough money. You let Tobias just blow through it anyway. I don't see why you can't cut me the same slack. I am not here to negotiate with you. Okay, I can't negotiate, but please have mercy on me. I'm sorry for everything. You think that an apology is good enough? I'm a victim here, too. I was tricked by Tobias, and you've thoroughly humiliated me and taught me a lesson, so please just ease up on me. Take back the police report, or let me out of the lease, or lend me the money for the debt, anything. I said that this isn't up for negotiation. You're still not listening. You willingly fell for the lies and you wouldn't listen when I try to tell you the truth, so don't start acting like the victim now. I know, but it was worth a try. I'm willing to do anything at this point. Anything but pay for your crimes? The punishment here does not fit the crime. I might deserve some of it, but this is too steep. Please take pity on me. At least don't let me go to jail out of my hands. Save your breath for the judge and jury. Remember, you came after me. You didn't listen properly. I hope you remember this lesson for the rest of your life. I have learnt my lesson. I'm changed. Please, save me. You win! You're right. You've always been right. I lost. I did something bad. It was all my fault. Please, help! Looks like the gods of victory are smiling on me today and not you. <laughs> Goodbye. Susie was soon arrested for theft and trespassing. She was held in jail for a while, but she was let out on bail. I don't know how she got the money to do it, but it just contributed to her debts. Now she has to pay her bail money and Toby's debts. My lawyer told me that the rental agreement wasn't really enforceable since I had no reason to believe she could actually pay any of what I asked for. I'm okay with that because it was never about the money for me. I just wanted her to realize how wrong she was and this was the only way she would know. Besides, she still got the massive debt to deal with and the amount keeps going up with incurring interest. She can't afford to have any time off so she works all seven days a week doing whatever she can to make money. As for me, I bought a new condo with strong security features. I finally feel safe living on my own again. The view isn't bad either. I feel so free. Free of that house and the bad memories and free of my cheating husband. God rest his soul. I'm at peace with the way my life has turned out and that is worth more than any money can get me. Thanks for buying that duplex for us. I'm so excited. 
Well, now you won't have to live alone anymore. I'm so happy we could do this for you. I really hope you enjoy living in the new place. More than anything, I'm just so happy that I get to live with my daughter now. Oh my god, did you just call me your daughter? Oh, that makes me so happy. Hold your horses! That's not what I meant at all. Don't get it twisted. Excuse me? I'm talking about Monica. Who else would I be talking about? I'm afraid I don't follow. You've never been the sharpest tool in the shed, have you? I guess I shouldn't have expected you to change. But what are you talking about? What do you mean you're going to be living with Monica? You heard me. I'm going to be living in that duplex that you bought with Monica and her husband. What's so hard to understand about that? That doesn't make any sense to me at all. Like I said, you never were the smartest one, huh? I don't see what's so hard to understand. I should have known that my loser son would find a no good wife like you. Who else would he end up with? I'm used to you insulting me, but do you really have to talk like that about your own son? Why wouldn't I? It's just the truth. Compared to my beautiful daughter, you're just an ugly good for nothing. Do you really have to go that far? What did I ever do to you? Oh, if only Craig had married somebody a little bit more like his little sister. Maybe his life would have been a little bit better. But we can all see how it's turned out now. There's no hope for him at this point. You know, maybe I'm not as beautiful as she is, but is that really so important to you? Well, not many people are. But even compared to the average woman, you don't measure up at all. <laughs> You've got a face like a horse. How can you be so terrible to me? It grosses me out to think that you're technically my family. I try not to think about it too much. I don't know why you've always been so terrible to Craig, but he still never gives up on you. You are his mother, after all, so he keeps holding out hope that someday you'll change. Well, I am the one who raised him. He owes me for that. Of course he won't give up on me. And even though you've always been terrible to me, I still wish we could have a better relationship. That's the whole reason we bought this duplex in the first place. So that we could try to have a better relationship going forward. You think I could have a good relationship with you? You must be out of your mind. Oh, give me a break. Just thinking about it makes me want to puke. Then what was all this about anyway? I thought you said you wanted to live with us. That's not exactly what I meant. I said I didn't want to live alone anymore, but I always wanted to live with Monica and her husband, not you guys. So why didn't you ask her to buy a house then? You should have gone to talk to your wonderful daughter about this instead. I didn't want to lay such a heavy burden on her. She doesn't deserve that. So you thought you'd trick us into doing it? There's no reason you should be treating us this way. We're still your family. I don't want to hear any more complaints from you. All I want from you is more money. Give me money. <laughs> Even after all this, you're still going to try to demand more money? I can't believe you. Of course I'm going to ask you for money. Why wouldn't I? That's all you guys are to me. You're just a source of money. So, do you really think that I'm inclined to give you any money after you say all these horrible things to me? What's wrong? Did I hurt your feelings? <laughs> this isn't just about money anymore. There's no way we're giving that house to you. We bought it. What are you talking about? You bought that house for me. How can you try to claim that that house isn't mine? I'm the whole reason you bought it in the first place. It's already mine. Excuse me? But I do want you to keep it in your name. I don't want to pay any taxes on it. Oh, and you guys will need to take care of all the utility bills for me, too. What in the world is wrong with you? If you're not going to give me any money anymore, then I have no need for either one of you anymore. I'm cutting you out of my life forever. Oh, would you really do that for me? Of course I would. Like I said, if you're not giving me any more money, then I don't need you anymore. I can't stand the sight of you anyway. I hope I never have to see you again. My name is Lucy. I'm 35 years old. I live with my husband, Craig. He's 38 years old. My insane mother-in-law, Rachel, is 70 years old. 
Craig's father died a few years ago, and since then, Rachel's been living by herself. Around last year, she started complaining about being lonely, living by herself. She said she wanted to live with someone again. Although she had never been very nice to me, or even to Craig, we thought we should do something for her. And Craig's never been very good at standing up to her anyway, so he couldn't really say no to her. We talked it over, and we decided we would buy a duplex so she could live with us without getting in our hair too much. We were hoping this could be an opportunity to start off on a new foot with her. All we wanted to do was try to build a better relationship with Rachel moving forward. But it seems like she herself had no intention of that ever happening. I couldn't believe that she was saying she was going to take that duplex from us. After all that we had done for her? But her insane rampage didn't stop there. It was just getting started. I'll be taking this map to the new house with me when I leave. Thanks. Excuse me? I need to know the address of the new place. I knew the general area, but I didn't know exactly where it was. Luckily, I found this map. I'm glad I came by your place so I could look for it. Did you just sneak into my house when I wasn't home? Oh, you don't have to act like I did something bad. I made a spare key for myself a while ago. It's not like I broke in. When did you do that? You never asked me about it. Remember when I came to bring you guys some souvenirs? Surely you haven't forgotten. Of course I remember those canned pineapples. You made such a convincing label to convince us they were fresh from Hawaii. Is that the time you're talking about? Yeah, that's the one. A pineapple is a pineapple anyway, right? What do you have to complain about? At least I bought you something. You thought you were being so funny. You have a real sick sense of humor. Well, when you were in the other room throwing a tantrum, I went into your purse and found a key. I took it and made a copy before you even realized it was gone. I was so pissed I didn't want to be around you. I guess I never should have left you alone with anything valuable. So anyway, I used that spare key to get in. I'm just here for a visit. I've done nothing wrong. What are you talking about? You can't just go into somebody's house without their permission while they're not home. Everyone knows that. But I thought you'd appreciate me coming by for a visit. It's not my fault that you weren't here. You must know that Craig and I are both out working at this time. Please tell me you haven't messed things up around the house too much. I just made myself some coffee and watched a little TV. You know, I can't miss Ellen. <sighs> Who told you you could drink my coffee and watch my TV? I'm taking that key back from you as soon as I can. Well, I don't even have it anymore. I gave the key to an organization that is trying to house the homeless. <laughs> I told them they could use the house however they saw fit. You did what now? By now, I'd imagine they're enjoying themselves in their new home. Why would you do something like that? Why would you think that's okay? I only did it because of my strong volunteer spirit. I feel like I've done something so wonderful for the community. I am reporting you to the police. How could you do that to me? And think about the poor homeless. They finally found a place to live. That's my house. Unfortunately, they can't all just live there with us. But I'm sure they're feeling so happy right about now. How could you turn them back out into the cold like that? They're so desperate for a place to live. Don't try to blame this on me. None of this would have happened if you hadn't tried to steal my house out from under me. This is all your fault. What do you think? They're all trying to steal valuables from your house? Trust me, you have nothing to worry about on that front. What do you mean by that? I already gathered up anything of value and took it with me. I knew you were up to no good in my house. I only took those things for their safekeeping. I did it for your own good. It's not like you really had anything worth stealing anyway. Except for the ring that I found on the shelf in your bedroom. I have to admit that was pretty valuable. That's my wedding ring. You have to give it back. Too bad. I already pawned it off. How could you? You know, I only got $8,000 for it. I was hoping it would be worth a little more. Anyway, I'll be keeping that money as a celebration of moving into my new home. Thanks for the gift. You're unbelievable. Now, I really have no use for you or Craig anymore. 
You're right about one thing. There's no going back from this. You've gone too far this time. Then we're in agreement. We all agree that it's the best if we never see each other again. So don't you ever come near me ever again. I can't wait to move in here with my daughter and her husband, just like I planned. I'm in the process of moving right now. Oh, you are, are you? And just where do you think you're moving to? Into the duplex you guys bought for me. Where else would I be going? I don't think that's going to work out for you. Are you still trying to claim that you're not going to give this house to me? I already told you it's mine. You can't stop me. No, that's not what I meant. The house isn't even finished yet. Didn't you know that? But there's this beautiful house right here in front of my eyes. <laughs> you can't fool me. What do you think, I'm stupid? That's somebody else's house. Stop trying to trick me. It's 5140 Elm Street. 5240 Elm Street. What did you just say? The house that we're buying is at 5240 Elm Street, not 5140. You can't be serious. You said you found a map at our house, right? Yes, I did. What about it? Well, you know, it took us a while to plan everything out for the new house. Yes, I was getting really impatient. Took you guys forever. We looked at a couple of different lots to buy the house on. We ultimately decided our one that was a block over from our initial plans. Hold on a minute. So you're telling me this is really some stranger's house? Look a little closer. Does it look like someone's already living there? Oh my god, there's a nameplate on the door that said the Smiths. Who are the Smiths? Now do you get it? But this looks just like the house I had imagined. I was so sure it was mine. Blinded by your own selfishness again. Shut your mouth. I don't want to hear it from you. But the movers already left with the truck. What am I supposed to do now? What do you mean the movers already left? So where is all your stuff right now? I was planning on making Craig come move it all into the house later. I had the movers just leave it all outside. I knew Craig would come running for me. But I thought that you had no more use for us. What happened to that? You still want to use Craig for hard labor when it's convenient for you, huh? Well, he's never been much use to me for most of his life. He still owes me. I raised him after all. I figured this is the least he could do for me before I cut him out of my life forever. I can't believe what a terrible mother you are. Whatever. It's not the problem anymore. I need you to get over here and gather up all my stuff for me. <laughs> Excuse me? I'm going to have to live with you guys until the house is finished. Why in the world would we ever let you do that? Do you think I'm happy about it? Trust me, I wouldn't be doing this unless I absolutely had to. I already sold my old place. I have no place else to go. Are you sure you can't buy your old place back? I already used all the money to buy new furniture. I don't have anything left. So, you're just sitting outside with a bunch of new furniture right now? Do you know how crazy you must look? What are the Smiths going to think? <laughs> That's exactly what I'm saying. That's why you need to get over here and help me right now. Why would I ever want to help you? You've been nothing but terrible to me. How could you do this to me? I have no interest in dealing with your selfishness anymore. You're on your own. You can't just leave me here like this. What happened to your wonderful plan? I thought you were going to be living with Monica and her husband. Where are they? Why can't you ask them to come help you? I guess I could try. I'm sure she'd be happy to let me live with her for a little while. Well, if that's the plan, then you better hurry up and give her a call. You can't be out there with all that furniture all day. I don't think you'll be able to get a hold of her, though. What do you mean? Why not? Monica changed her phone number. Would you stop lying? Why would you do a thing like that? Go ahead, try call her. You'll see exactly what I mean. Oh my god, it says this number is no longer in use. What is going on here? Monica and her husband decided they don't want anything to do with you anymore. They're cutting you off. There's no way she would ever do that to me. I'm her mother. Monica's been fed up with you for a while now. 
She never liked the way you play favorites, even though she was your favorite. But she's never said anything like that to me. How could that be true? Well, that's how she really feels. She does love Craig, after all. She just never felt like she could tell you before. But she was excited about living in the duplex with me. She was just going along with your plans because she didn't want to upset you. She knows how crazy you can get. No! She's such a nice girl. She would never think of doing something like this to me. You are her mother, so she was able to put up with your behavior until now. But this time, even she thinks you went too far. She can not believe that you would try to do what you're doing. Why would she care about that? It was better for her that way. Because she thinks about people other than herself? I know that's difficult for you to comprehend. <laughs> no, Monica would never do this to me, not her. You're making this all up. Then why can't you get a hold of her? How am I making that up? There must be some other explanation for it. She wouldn't do this to hide from me. I'm going to go to her house right now and check it out for myself. That sounds like a great idea. That'll be the quickest way for you to know that I'm telling the truth. Once you see that empty house, you'll know that everything that I'm telling you is true. Empty house? What are you talking about? She and her husband already moved into a new place. Of course, it's a place of their own. They would never try to steal the house that we bought. Stop lying. You're not fooling anyone. That's what you really think? Then go see for yourself. It'll just be a big waste of time, but I don't really care. Are you telling me she really is gone? Are you finally starting to believe me? Is my beautiful Monica really abandoning me like this? Yes, she is. And Craig and I will be abandoning you shortly. Wait a minute. What am I supposed to do now? Where am I supposed to go? Why should I care? All my stuff is out here in the street, and I don't have anywhere to go. What am I going to do now? I really don't know what I'm going to do. Oh, hey, that reminds me. It's supposed to start raining heavily pretty soon. Are you kidding me? It'll be a shame if all your new furniture got rained on. You wouldn't even be able to return it then. I need to find a new apartment, fast. Oh, good luck with that. You know, there's a housing crisis in the city. All the apartments are getting bought up by corporations. It's going to be extremely difficult for you to find an apartment at all, let alone right now. <laughs> no way. You're about to get exactly what you deserve. You need to give me some money right now. Even if I can't find an apartment right now, I'm sure I can find a hotel to stay in. And I need to put my stuff in storage. I've got to get it away from the rain as soon as possible. There's no way I'm giving you a dime. Why in the world would I do that? In fact, I'm thinking I'm going to sue you for damages. Excuse me? You're going to sue me? You at least owe me the money for the wedding ring that you stole from my house. I told you that was in celebration of me moving into my new home. You can't do that to me. <laughs> that lame excuse isn't going to work on me, and it won't work in court. You could be arrested for theft. Oh my god, are they coming to get me? Did you call the police on me? No, I thought that would be too good for you, so I decided not to file a police report. Would you make up your mind one way or the other? I have my reasons, not sure you'll like them. When the cops came to clear all the homeless people out of my house, they told me something. What's that? They told me something really interesting about jail. I'd never really thought about it before. When you go to jail, at least you have a roof over your head. So he said sometimes a lot of those homeless people try to get themselves put in jail at least for a night. I guess that would be better for them than being on the streets. So what I'm trying to say is, I don't even want you to have a roof over your head. I want you to be stuck out there in the cold rain. That's why I decided not to file a police report. <laughs> oh. That's why? Well, how could you be so cruel? But I will be filing a civil suit against you. Like I said, you at least owe me for the ring that you stole. Plus, I want you to pay back the money that we spent cleaning up the house. You're going to owe us at least $10,000 when it's all said and done. 
How am I ever supposed to pay for that? You know I don't have any money. Why is that my problem? Good luck figuring out while you're standing there in the cold rain all day. Listen, Lucy, I'm sure we can work this out. Let's just talk things over. God, you're such a disgusting person. Where's this sudden change coming from? Let's just forget about our past, huh? It's all just water under the bridge. Let's live together like we planned. Ew, gross! No way! But the new house you bought is a duplex. You're going to have so much wasted space without me there. My parents are going to be living with us instead, so you don't need to worry about that. I don't care about what your parents want to do. What about me? Let's make up and live together after all. What do you say? I used to think I wanted to have a better relationship with you, but those feelings are all entirely gone now. And it's entirely your fault. You brought this on yourself. No, it's not too late. We can start all over, right? There's absolutely no way you need to give up on that idea right now. <laughs> But I don't have that much time left. You wouldn't do this to an old lady like me, would you? How are you going to be able to sleep at night? Oh, I am going to sleep like a baby knowing that you're out of my life forever. <laughs> don't say that to me. You have to help me. Oh my god, it already started raining. You have to come help me right now. What am I going to do? No matter how many times you ask me, there's no way I'm coming to help you. Hope you enjoy getting soaked to the bone. But what's going to happen to me? I'm going to become homeless. Is that what you want? That sounds awesome. I think it'll be good for you. Maybe hitting rock bottom will finally make you realize what a terrible person you've been your whole life. You need some time to think about what you've done. But at my age, if I hit rock bottom, I'll never be able to climb back up. How am I supposed to come back from this? That's not how I want to spend out the rest of my years. Please don't do this to me. Rachel stood there in a daze for a while, not knowing what to do with herself. I think she was probably in shock. Eventually, Mr. Smith came out of his house to yell at her to get off his lawn. Apparently, that's what made her snap back to reality. She used some of the little money she had left to buy a little handcart. Then she found a vacant lot nearby. It took her a whole lot of trips going back and forth, but she eventually moved all her stuff into that vacant lot. After that, she had no choice but to just live as a homeless person for a while. And then I went ahead and filed that civil suit against her. Eventually, she did find a place that she could live. All she had was a single tiny room. She didn't even own a bathroom. It was a shared bathroom kind of situation. Her new furniture was all ruined by the rain. Not that she had any room for it in her tiny apartment anyway. She shoved in whatever she could. I'd imagine it looks more like a junkyard in there than a room where somebody lives. She has no source of income besides her social security, so it's going to be very, very hard for her to pay back the 10000 that she owes us. Even in installments, it's going to take her forever. She had to get a job as a dishwasher. Social security was never going to be enough. Now she lives a sad, lonely, poor life. On the other hand, we moved into that nice new duplex that we bought. We're happy to have my parents move in with us too. We're all living a nice, peaceful life now. Hi, Summer the Commoner. Do you have five minutes to talk? Huh? What is it? And do you really have to go out of your way to call me that? I didn't say anything incorrect, did I? You are a commoner. Your husband is an office worker, after all. That's really not the problem here. Whatever. Anyway, I just wanted to let you know not to come to tomorrow's tea party. What? Why not? Because I don't want to have to breathe the same air as you. <laughs> You dirty the air with your presence. Huh? Why are you saying something like that to me? What's your problem? Have I ever done anything to you to deserve to be treated like this? Well, not really. But you're poor, right? 
I don't want poor people to show up tomorrow. Stay at home in your little hovel while we have fun. What makes you think I'm poor? Oh, please. Of course you're poor. Even if I was, what would be so wrong with that? You don't like poor people? I never said that. You poor people can do whatever you want. Just as long as you stay at arm's length and don't try to participate in my tea parties. Sorry. Elites only. You should know you're a place by now, commoner. Wow, jeez. I have no idea how to respond to that. As for tomorrow, it's more of a meetup for the women living in company housing than a tea party, right? It's a tea party! But we're not even having tea. We're just getting coffee at a local cafe. Calling it a tea party makes you sound like the queen or something. Well, I may not be the queen, but people certainly respect me as if I were royalty. No, they don't. They really don't. Do you know what happened to the royals in France in the 17th century? The common people chopped their heads off and overthrew them because they were sick of being treated badly. I'm pretty sure that's not something you want to deal with. Whatever. I'm not royalty anyway, so who cares? I'm just a regular person. So you finally admitted it. What is that supposed to mean? Oh, nothing, nothing. I'm just saying, if you really want to bring up royalty, this conversation could get a little complicated. Yeah, I get the picture. Anyway, back to what I was saying. I don't want you to come to our tea party tomorrow. If you're there, then that means I have to breathe the same air as a poor person. I think maybe you missed the point I was making. Anyway, why am I the only one being ostracized? I thought all the women in company housing were attending tomorrow, so why am I being excluded? Because I decided not to allow you to attend. Yes, yes, I get that. I'm asking you, why don't you want me to attend? Do you understand that? I want to know the reason. How about you Google what reason means? Cheers. Why are you being so rude to me? You're scaring me. Oh, I'm the one being rude? I can see I'm going to have to fight insanity with insanity if I want to get anywhere here. I'm just going to pretend like I didn't hear that. Anyway, didn't you hear? My husband is the head of the marketing department. Yes, I know that. I think everyone who's ever met you knows about that. Oh, you think so? Well, that's because I must be giving off the sophisticated air of a rich woman, huh? People can sense I'm better than them. That I have the energy of an aristocrat. I don't think you need to worry about that. Everyone knows about it because you go around bragging constantly that your husband is the head of the marketing department, as if that makes you the queen or something. You advertise it everywhere, to everyone you meet. Oh, please. You're talking about me like I'm a human billboard or something. I was wondering if you were trying to make sure everyone in the whole world knows that your husband is head of the marketing department. As usual, you're a spiteful woman, Summer. Sometimes I don't even know why I bother talking to a lowly gutter rat like you. Anyway, the point is, my husband is the head of the marketing department and your husband is just a regular office worker. You think with a difference in status like that, you can come along to the same tea party as me? Don't be ridiculous. Royalty don't have tea with peasants, you know. <laughs> well, I guess we are on different levels. In terms of mental derangement, you've definitely got a leg up on me. Oh, stop it. Are you even listening to me? I'm trying to tell you how it is right now, so listen up. The wife of a lowly office worker can't come to a party thrown by me, the wife of the head of the department. It's just common sense. Have you got that? You and I have nothing in common. Like I said, elites only. You understand, right? No, I don't understand. You're not making any sense. This is a tea party for all the women living in the company housing, right? Is the question mark really necessary? 
I mean, no matter how you look at it, it's weird for you to invite everyone except me, isn't it? Everyone else is going. And most of the women there are the wives of regular office workers. So why am I the only one being excluded? It doesn't make any sense. Don't get me wrong, it's not like I'm desperate to attend no matter what. But can you at least explain what your logic is here? I can't make head or tail of it. All right, let me break it down for you. I'm not inviting you because you don't understand the social structure of the company housing. There, happy now. And I suppose you're the spokesperson for common sense, are you? There's a hierarchy that everyone needs to adhere to. And those who don't understand common sense don't get to attend my tea parties. In that case, I think you'll have to uninvite yourself, Nikki. Are you making fun of me? What is your problem? Why are you always being so nasty to me? Are you jealous or something? Just because my husband is the head of the marketing department? If you want to come tomorrow, then you'll have to learn your lesson and just acquire some common sense. Do you think you can do that? Follow the rules of the social hierarchy like everyone else does. What exactly do you mean by that? What rules? Let me make it simple for you. For example, you've never brought me any presents, have you? Presents? Like what? Is it your birthday or something? Of course not! It's because I'm the wife of the head of the marketing department. The other ladies here all have to bring me presents and stuff. Regularly. That's why they're allowed to attend my parties despite being dirty commoners. Why are you so fixated on this commoner and aristocrat dynamic? Are you from the Middle Ages or what? And even back then, a commoner wouldn't be invited to an aristocrat's parties, even if they offered gifts. Oh, forget it. You just don't get it, do you? Everyone else understands the social hierarchy around here. How come you're the only one having trouble with this? Why are you so unreasonable? So your point is, if I want to be invited to your little get-togethers, I need to give you some kind of present, right? Well, I mean, you can do whatever you want. I'm not forcing you. I'm just telling you the reason why you don't fit in is because you haven't adhered to the social hierarchy. That's how it is around here. So you just want people to bribe their way into your social circle? Do you just love receiving presents that much? Talk about materialistic. It's not that. I'm not a materialistic person. But it's a sign of respect, you see. When someone comes to me with their head down offering me presents, I know it means that they understand who is in charge around here. Got it. In that case, I think I'm good. <laughs> I knew it. You really are crazy. That or you're so poor that you can't afford to buy a present for me. <laughs> I just don't like bribery, that's all. So no matter what you say, I'm not going to give you a darn thing. You don't deserve it. So go ahead and exclude me from your social hierarchy or whatever. I don't want any part of it. You're going to regret this summer. No one is going to invite you to anything around here. You'll be so lonely without me. Don't come crying to me and begging to be part of the group when you change your mind. Whatever. Do what you want. I couldn't care less. So, you really didn't show your face after all that. That's a shame. I was waiting for you to come over and apologize to me with some kind of gift on hand. Sorry to disappoint you or whatever, but I had zero intention of doing something like that. I guess I'm at fault for expecting anything out of a poor, downtrodden woman like you. Well, you know what? It's clear to me now that we'll never have anything in common. So I give up on trying to have anything to do with you. I can't teach you about common sense if you're not willing to learn. Well, I agree with one part of that. We really don't have anything in common, do we? Just so you know, right now I'm enjoying the tea party with everyone. We're all having so much fun without you. 
It's really too bad you couldn't just lower your pride a little and join us. No helping it, I guess. And what about you? What are you up to, Summer? All by yourself at home, I suppose. It must be frustrating knowing that everyone is having fun without you, huh? Tell me, how does it feel to be excluded? I'm perfectly fine. And I'm not all by myself at home, by the way. I'm having lunch with the company president at his place. Huh? Why? What are you doing there? You're having lunch with the company president? What are you talking about? What does that mean? Well, lunch is a meal that is typically eaten in the middle of the day. I know that much. I wasn't born yesterday, you know. You may enjoy mocking people, but there's a limit even for you, Summer. I'm asking you why you're eating lunch with the company president at his house. Obviously. You're just lying, aren't you? Trying to make me jealous. You shouldn't lie about these things, you know. Everyone works at the same company, so you'll get found out instantly. I'm not lying. I'm attending a tea party at the company president's house. As in, we're drinking tea together. Like a real tea party. You what? Why? And how is your tea party going? Don't make fun of me. Why are you at the company president's house? And why wasn't I, the wife of the head of the marketing department, invited? Explain to me right now. My husband is a relative of the company president. Huh? Seriously? So we go way back, the three of us. I'm surprised you, the wife of the head of the marketing department, didn't know that. You've got to be kidding me. Why didn't anyone inform me? My husband has been working as a regular employee for five years now, and his performance has improved significantly. So he's finally due for a promotion, at long last. What? A promotion to what position? Vice president of the company. Huh? That's crazy! Your husband is going to be vice president after just five years? Yep. So that's why we're attending a party for the senior ranks of the company right now. The president was kind enough to invite me. At the moment, the men are all talking business and I have a moment free, so I took the opportunity to reply to your petty little messages. Don't you dare look down on me! You're just trying to appear strong because you didn't get invited to my party today. But I know you're full of regret inside. Anyway... The point is, the company president and I have known each other for a long time, through my husband. Are you enjoying your elites only tea party? Stop it! Stop acting like you're better than me! You disrespected me by lying to me that your husband was just a regular employee. I never lied to you about anything, and I wasn't disrespecting you either. If anyone is disrespecting anyone here, it's you. Going around demanding bribes from people to get into your social circle. Treating everyone around here like dirt. Looking down on us. Calling us common. All because your husband is the head of the human resources or whatever. Head of marketing! The point is, you've been looking down on everyone around you. Thinking that you're some kind of aristocrat. And it's not even because of your own position. It's because of your husband's. He's the one who did all the work. But in spite of that, you still think that you're better than everyone else. Don't you try and lecture me. You're the one who caused all the problems here. You went around lying, telling everyone your husband was just a regular employee. You deceived me. This is a scam, I tell you. How could you do that to me? You liar. Like I already said, I never lied about anything. My husband is a regular employee. And it's not my fault you're the only one who didn't know he was going to get a promotion. What do you mean? That can't be right. I know everything about everyone living in the company housing. Apparently not. Everyone around here knows my husband is going to be the next vice president. But how can that be? I don't understand. 
Thanks to his exceptional performance, there have been rumors about his promotion flying around for quite a while now. It's all anyone at the company has been talking about. But I guess your husband didn't talk about it to you, huh? So you're saying my husband knows about all this? Of course he does. Everyone working in the company knows. And so do their wives and husbands. People even brought me presents because of it. Thinking I was like you, no doubt. They did? Wait a minute. Do the other women around here know about this promotion? The ones attending my tea party today? How many times do I have to say it? Everyone knows. They all seem to have been having a hard time being under your thumb all this time. But I'm not interested in taking your position, so I told them sternly that I don't take bribes. I won't be like you. They told you they were having a hard time? No way. They wouldn't say that about me. Everyone loves going to my tea parties. We all get along great. They love me. There's no way they all hate me behind my back. That's impossible. The other women here have nothing but respect for me, and that's a fact. Well, it looks like a revolution must have happened in your social hierarchy. I guess that's what happens to aristocrats when they disrespect the common folk too much. <laughs> I never meant to disrespect anyone. I've been nothing but pleasant to them. I told everyone, you know. I told them I would make sure to get rid of anyone around here who was disrespecting them. You don't mean me, do you? You've got to be kidding. You get rid of me? And just how do you intend to do that? I am the wife of the head of the marketing department. You can't get rid of me. Does your husband know about all this? About what, exactly? Your husband seems to be quite a sensible and reasonable person. In other words, the exact opposite of you. I'm sure if he knew about how you were treating his co-workers' wives around here, he'd put a stop to it right away. But the fact that he hasn't done anything means you probably haven't told him, right? What are you going on about exactly? What does my husband have to do with any of this? Oh, so you really haven't told him about your bribery, huh? You'd be in quite a bit of trouble if he were to find out about it, wouldn't you? Of course he doesn't know! Are you crazy? You think I would tell him about it? I'm not stupid! And you better not breathe a word to him either, Summer! He's not involved in this! So, you mean to tell me that you've been using your husband's power within the company to go around disrespecting all of us, but your husband himself doesn't know about any of it? I see. That's interesting. I wonder what he's going to make of all this when he finds out. Wait, I'm sorry. I won't do anything bad anymore. I won't accept bribes from people anymore. I'll refuse them like you did. And anyway... I had no idea that your husband was going to be the next vice president. I would never have said all that stupid stuff if I'd realized. I promise I won't look down on you anymore. Really? I promise I'll never call you poor or common again. So please forgive me for all my recent actions. I didn't know what I was doing. Don't get me wrong. It's not like I hate you or anything like that. I just think you're an irrational, arrogant woman. But whatever. It's not my job to judge your behavior. Yeah, exactly. I'll leave that to your beloved husband. The head of the marketing department, is he? Wait a minute. You're not actually planning to tell him about all this, are you? Great. He's just arrived at the party now. Perfect timing, don't you think? I'll go have a little chat with him. Wait, you can't do this. Enjoy the rest of your tea party, Nikki. After that, Nikki's husband heard all about her bribery of the other women in company housing and her arrogant attitude from Summer. Her husband, a kind and sensible man, was furious at his wife's bad behavior. After talking to the other women in the company housing, he decided to return all the presents Nikki had received to them. In certain cases where it wasn't possible to return the item directly, he paid them back an equivalent sum of money. Although Nikki's husband had paid the money on her behalf, 
that was only a temporary measure. Soon after all of this went down, he filed for divorce. Nikki was forced to move out of the house and get a job in order to pay back all of the money to him. She was forced to start living in a rundown government housing building while slowly trying to pay her ex-husband back. Nowadays, the former self-proclaimed aristocrat is surviving off microwave dinners and struggling to pay her bills, let alone her ex-husband. Every day she recalls how easy she had it living with her husband in company housing while abusing her power against the other women there. As for Summer, thanks to her husband's recent promotion, they were able to move to a bigger apartment. Everyone living in company housing can breathe a sigh of relief now that Nikki the Tyrant is gone and enjoy a life of peace and quiet. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video and want to see more, please like the video and subscribe to the channel for more.